In this new segment of Advisor Revelations, the DPL team will discuss how to evaluate new solutions and address current challenges and the strategies that can help you grow your firm and AUM. Welcome to the Advisor Revelations podcast. I'm Ross McGoodwin, Regional Vice President of Member Success at DPL Financial Partners. Today, we will discuss how firms like Bluestem Wealth Partners are transitioning their book of business through the Breakaway Accelerator Program. Our guests today are Scott Marquardt and Steve Rice. Thanks for joining today, guys. Thanks for having yeah, us, Russ. Appreciate it, Russ. Thanks. Absolutely. It's going to be fun having two guests, a uh, bit of a uh, groundbreaking episode uh, in, that, in that aspect. I'm usually just having one person on their line, so, so it should be fun. Um, thanks for having us. Thanks for joining, of course. Um, before we start our discussion, I want to remind our listeners to please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite streaming app for updates. If any topics today interest you, be sure to contact a DPL consultant on our website at dplfp.com. All right, guys, so that our listeners can have a better understanding of the type of firm you lead and your experience with financial planning, can each of you share a little bit more about yourself and Blue Stem Wealth Partners and how long have been partnered with DPL? Well, thanks, Ross. I'll go first. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, I've been in the industry for 32 years. I am our current uh, CFO, uh, I'm a CFP. I wear a variety of hats here at uh, Blue Stem Wealth Partners. Prior to this, back many years ago, I started my own firm. I sold it. I went to work for our corporate uh, broker dealer and did some leadership there for about 10 years. And then for the last eight years, I've been here with uh, Bluestone Wealth Partners. Um, we have been associated with the DPL probably since the beginning of our uh, RIA transition. We're a fee-based only RIA, and we did that in February. And I think our relationships probably started around that April time frame, April, May. So it's been a, a short but productive uh, a partnership. So I'm Scott Marquardt. Um, I've been in the industry for a little over 19 years, uh, 18 of those as a uh, client facing advisor. Um, so that's that's been my main role uh, at Blue Stem Wealth Partners. Um, uh, I kind of had the rural Minnesota office out in uh, Litchfield, Minnesota, which is uh, about 90 minutes west of Minneapolis. Uh, and my main role is to see some of our highest net worth clients in the rural uh, Minnesota area. Um, the other role that I play in the firm is um, uh, I lead the sales uh, force, uh, our advisor sales force. And so we now have uh, 10 active uh, advisors that uh, currently see clients. So I, uh, I'm i responsible for, um, you know, strategic um, sales leadership uh, with that group. Fantastic. So yeah, today we're going to have someone from you know, more the finance side of a firm and someone who's in, from the advisory uh, side, more client facing. And I think that's going to be great for our audience to hear both perspectives today. Uh, so I think that's going to be <clears throat> very productive for everybody. Uh, so when Bluestem began uh, researching the fee-only space, uh, you all a few months ago decided to embark on a transition from a more traditional broker-dealer uh, model into becoming fee-only advisor. That's a big transition. That's a big step. And I bet we have many firms uh, or um, listeners today uh, who are about to maybe think about a similar transition. Uh, what really led to the decision to move to fee-only and what was the items you were looking to tackle first when you were uh, considering transition, uh, such as a move to fee-only? Well, I think and I'll go first, Scott can weigh in, but I'll, I would say, I think the first thing is you think about the success of the transition. Uh, first and foremost, our clients come first and we wanted them to be taken care of in terms of what this meant to them, what type of, of process would they have to go through? Would it be inconvenient? Would we, would we be successful at uh, sharing with them our story and our why? And once we got past that and through that, which took some time because there's a lot of good questions and a little bit of handholding, not only just for our clients, but sometimes for ourselves, um, you know, we felt pretty good coming out on the other end of that. Um, in terms of the reason why, you know, there's a variety of reasons you, you make a decision like this. 
and there's reasons to stay, there's reasons to go, there's reasons to go fee only in a, a hybrid I, or a hybrid RIA, excuse me. Uh, we chose a fee, fee only. We have three offices, we have 36 people. So there was a lot of moving parts and thousands of clients. So it was not a decision we took lightly. There was a lot of discussions, a lot of decision making, um, and a lot of nights where you just had to really think hard about what was the right decision, most importantly for our clients. Secondly, for our, our team, our employees, and then uh, third, uh, third for the firm. Um, and I think one of the biggest reasons when we look at it here, six, uh, actually uh, eight, eight, nine months later, one of the biggest reasons was just transparency and true, real independence. And um, I think that segues into our relationship with DPL. When we started working with you, Ross, and I know we'll get into that a little bit later here in the podcast, but just the variety of options that we've learned about and the features and the benefits for the benefit of our clients that you've showed us, your team has showed us, is just one huge reason why the real independence has benefited our clients, we feel, and and the firm. Yeah, I, I think that's well said. And, you know, just to add on to that a little bit, um, you know, <laughs> quite honestly, the the product suite, um, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. And, and the product suite was not really top of mind, especially, um, you know, on the annuity uh, life insurance side, because, you know, we had, we had been doing managed money for a number of years before this, right? So the brokerage side of things was not going to change a lot with, um, you know, with, with going independent, but we really wanted to, like Steve said, um, we, we wanted to do things kind of the way we thought our firm um, could best serve our clients. And so um, there were a number of different reasons um, why we wanted to um, or what we wanted to do, which then led us to uh, ultimately uh, creating our own RIA. But there were also some things that we really liked about our former broker dealer. And, um, and there were some compelling reasons to stay. But I think we we just, you know, weighed those two together and and decided to make the move. And then it really wasn't until after the move when we really started diving into um, the insurance side of things, which I know we want to get into here. So I can, you know, save the details for that. But um, so that's kind of really the, the, the transition, uh, the way the transition kind of fold, unfolded. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of the starting points in terms of our conversation and when I guess the first decisions you all made during your transition was to find uh, a great platform for uh, perform supporting, for really managing client relationships uh, from a financial planning perspective. And you all decided to go with the Black Diamond Wealth Platform. Uh, and that was how we started working together or got introduced. Uh, Black Diamond uh, has been a great partner for us and we've been uh, their chosen partner for uh, the only annuities and insurance for their advent insurance marketplace. So that's how we got introduced and really started diving into how can we maybe think about a transition of your all's legacy book of business. And when you all decided to make uh, this change, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was a sense that you're maybe just leaving annuity assets behind. Is that correct? And <laughs> what did you discover was maybe different or surprising when you started working with DPL for that transition on the annuity side? Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting that this conversation happens the way it does, because that was really one of the things that, um, you know, on top of all of the, 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 the business reasons on how we thought we could serve our clients better by being independent, you know, one of the things that's out there is you still got to figure out how to make it work financially for the firm, right? And, uh, and one of the things was, man, you know, we're not a super heavy annuity firm, but we had a, a fair number um, of annuities uh, out there for clients. And we're just like, you know, how many of those are going to be realistically coming with us? Uh, and what really made us a little bit nervous was, I shouldn't say nervous, that's a bad word. Um, just put some doubt in our minds about how much of that money could really follow was, you know, all of the living benefits, because as part of our financial planning process that we're, that we're really heavy in, uh, we do a lot of comprehensive planning, the, you know, the annuities play uh, a piece in the income solution, especially in retirement. And so 
um, a lot of our annuities that we had were living benefits. And we just thought, well, those are not coming with us because, you know, the high watermark is up here. The actual contract value is down here because they've been taking money all these years or, you know, 2022 really hit the uh, the contract value um, hard. And so in our in our move in early 2023, we were just kind of writing those off as not coming with. And um, that's been far from what's been reality. So, yeah. And, and you know, I, I know you implied this, Scott, but as we look at that and as we review our options, of course, we always think client first. And uh, Ross, you've been very helpful with making helping us make that decision in terms of what's best for the client first and foremost, uh, because each situation is going to be a little bit different. And so we have uh, we have transitioned some assets and we continue to review that with our clients and just try to meet their needs, uh, whether it's tax deferral, guaranteed income, or just uh, the ability to provide some outline uh, product options. And the other thing I'll add to that, Ross, too, is, and, um, is, you know, so we might, you know, we had our relationship with DPL now for, you know, since let's call it February. Um, but we really didn't get to start this whole transition of the annuities, you know, probably until about May, if I'm guessing, you know, maybe, maybe April, but, um, so we've really only been doing this for about five or six months and, I, I just got to say, there's there's no way, no possible way, that we could have transitioned. You know, the number of contracts that we've had, uh, done the analysis to make sure that that it was better for the client, um, done the paperwork. We, we just never could, would be able to do all those things. DPL has taken a huge load off of our firm to run illustrations. Um, you know, scour the universe, the annuity universe, for what's out there and what might be uh, best for the client, and then when we do decide to make the change after talking to the client, then to handle the paperwork side of it. Um, that's been a, that's been a gigantic change from what we were used to when we did all the paperwork ourselves. Yeah, no, appreciate the kind words there. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately what surprises a lot of firms is a couple of things. One, you mentioned right there, Scott, that, um, in the past, we're used to really having to handhold everything with the transition process and the evaluation. So with our breakaway accelerator program here, uh, we're looking to take as much off your plate as possible. And I think the first and most daunting aspect for most firms is we've got to review all these policies, right? So the approach we took with your firm was, hey, let's just get all, as clients come to mind, as clients come in for meetings, let's get all these statements uploaded and then understand the client objectives moving forward. So for any of them that were low cost growth, <laughs> Through our analysis, those are a pretty easy win. You know, we're essentially switching share classes to a more efficient model on the fee only side through a 1035 tax rate exchange. But it's those living benefit riders and those contracts with income riders that I think for many firms are the assumption is exactly what you all had. These aren't going to make sense to ever move. Well, due to the repricing with some of these fee only strategies and let's be honest, the interest rate environment. Uh, that's been a huge driver. Uh, the timing actually ended up making a lot of sense. So there's contracts out there where we were pretty far underwater, but for the goal of guaranteed income, we were either able, able to improve the outcome either right away with more income or through a rising income strategy, provide a, a higher cumulative income potential that was really attractive. So with Sc Scott, would you say the rising income feature was maybe one of the biggest revelations out of the gate in terms of the opportunity? Yeah, I mean, because, uh, you know, formerly we uh, we knew that there was an opportunity for income to to go up, but the likelihood of that happening after a client decides to start taking income was just really, really low, like very, very low. Um, and, you know, much to our pleasant surprise is when we get into the independent world, uh, there are products out there where um, where we know that the income stream will will go higher um, every single year by how much we don't know, but we do know that it will go higher. And, you know, I think we've taken a fairly realistic conservative approach when looking at client cases and say, okay, you know, initially this living benefit might be slightly less than what they're receiving now. But in two or three years, it's very, very likely that what they're getting out of the 
um, income stream is is actually going to be higher, and then of course um, even higher afterwards every year going forward. So, um, you know, once the clients understand that, and and once um, they you have this discussion around, hey, our our goal for you is to create as much lifetime income as possible, right? And you know, when you look at it um, in the very short term, you know, and then and then look through the long term lens, you see very clearly that well, that's you know, it's a it's a better option for you to be in the in the rising income um, rising income product, even if you have to take a little bit less to start. Absolutely, no, it's it's and part of the way we're looking to try to drive that analysis is of course leveraging technology. And Steve, I think you know technology is one of the uh, areas where insurance annuities have uh, lagged behind for decades. Uh, since our relationship with Black Diamond, it's changed the game a bit in how we think we might be able to help you all not only run proposals, analysis, but then ultimately view it in your desktop. It's great to have better solutions potentially, but how does it fit into your day-by-day -day, uh, experience as an advisor? So Steve, can you talk a little bit more about how technology has played a role and what you've discovered with what we've built with Black Diamond as well? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's a good question. And a little bit of shout out to Brian Dodonis from Black Diamond because he was the one that originally introduced us. And, um, you know, just so the listeners know, we did talk to other groups, other companies, other firms. And we did our due diligence. Um, I forget the exact number of other firms and companies we talked to, but I, I recall three or four. And we just kept coming back, Ross, to you and DPL just because of uh, the service, uh, the structure, and uh, in part the technology, because you guys got that out in front of us right away. And one of the things that really hits home for us is, as as Todd, as Scott said, is you take a lot of that paperwork, that back office processing off of our shoulders. You take the licensing uh, part uh, off of our shoulders, but you also have some really nice technology in terms of uh, the dashboard, for instance. Um, I look at the dashboard at least weekly, maybe more often. Your dashboard provides information around contract status, it provides information in terms of what's been issued, what's pending, how many contracts are in play, uh, if there's a problem, what the status is, what the, uh, what the issue is. Um, and then we can work as a partnership to, to get the client involved if needed or in case we miss something, we can get it solved. So we have found that whole process very enlightening, very efficient. And part of that is the technology. I think I mentioned earlier, we have three offices and Scott's in our Litchfield office. Uh, they're all in Minnesota. We have one office in a uh, metro area of Minneapolis. We have one in Delano. Uh, we have one in Litchfield. And then at, let me back up. Our metro one is in Minnetonka. So we need technology to be efficient. We have people in all offices. We, uh, we manage 700 million of AUM. And this is, a, this is an important part of our business for the benefit of our clients. And so to be efficient and to be thorough, to be accurate and timely uh, is, is important all the time, but especially with the, the model that we have. And we, we appreciate what DPL has built. So Steve, yeah, thanks. That, that's really helpful for everyone to, to hear and understand. You know, it's great to know that there might be better solutions, but if it can't fully integrate into your desktop or there's not an efficient use of technology, it's really hard to manage this across multiple offices. You know, we work with some firms that have a single office or a single main advisor, but that's not the case with Bluestem. You all have three uh, different offices all across Minnesota, as you mentioned, and from your perspective to manage what contracts are, are coming in and, and where you expect fee-only revenue to come in the door. Having that global view through the DPL website, but also through Black Diamond, uh, I think is, is one of the, the biggest things that makes this uh, scalable and ultimately something that can be accomplished, you know, as quickly as this has, you know, in just a few months moving uh, almost 20 million. Uh, and uh, as we said, maybe triple that uh, as possible uh, over the next uh, few months. Uh, so really excited about the opportunity there, of course, to continue uh, with the initial project. So with the, the Breakaway Accelerator program, you know, we're of course looking to help uh, review transition business, but then on the onset, uh, with applications, make it as easy as, hey, since a couple of PDFs or now, 
complete just a couple items on our website through an online data process, and then we'll be running with it. And I think you all know with, with applications and then processing them with insurance companies, there's at times issues. Uh, what's nice is that we'll go fight those battles for you. We'll reach out to the insurance carriers and figure out what's going on so that you're not an island uh, trying to figure this all out. So really trying to not only help with the scalability of post issue, but before that, make it as scalable as possible so that you're not bogged down with every detail. And hopefully you're getting the sense that you can focus on what you want on a day-to-day -day basis. So as we continue to work with your firm, transitioning the book of business, uh, how do you envision not just this initial project, but for years to come, working with DPL and helping clients across the annuity insurance front? Are there new ideas that have come up that are interesting? What's the, the big picture you know, opportunity that you all see uh, with the partnership as well? You know, so like we had mentioned before, um, our, our firm was not uh, real heavy on the annuity side. Um, you know, if I had to guess, it probably made up 10 to 15% of our, our business. Um, we used them where we thought they were appropriate. Um, again, mostly on the uh, income distribution side, um, but some on the, on the tax deferred growth. And um, I just think that, you know, going forward, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a level of confidence for, for me, you know, as an advisor, and I'm sure for everyone else um, on our team, when they get more integrated into um, transitioning these, they'll see, you know, some of the benefits out there. And um, I just think that, you know, again, because of the, the licensing, the paperwork, um, you know, the processing, those things that have been taken off of our plates, um, it's just nice to be able to have a resource that says, hey, here's, here's a case I'm looking at, um, you know, do, is there a solution out there that makes sense, right? Um, and then just knowing, having that peace of mind and that confidence and knowing that, hey, they've, they being due, uh, DPL has done their due diligence, they've scoured kind of the universe, um, you know, across multiple uh, insurance companies, insurance carriers um, to find, uh, you know, lowest costs, uh, best benefits, um, you know, that kind of thing to um, take that off our plate. And then so then we can just be advisors, right? We can just, uh, we can just, you know, come to our clients and say, hey, um, you know, we've done all of the work, done all the research, um, you know, this is what we think is best for you. And, uh, and just foster that relationship versus getting caught up in the minutia of, of all of the other stuff. Well, uh, Scott did a nice job of summarizing it. Um, I think when you look at where we've come we've had our heads down and we're just coming up for air now uh, as we've said multiple times i um i think it's just the beginning it's the tip of the iceberg and when you ask me you know what what's next i i think i think for a while it's business as usual uh we continue to talk to clients continue to seek out what it is that they want but uh the future does excite us we've talked a little bit about it like okay you know, this was the stuff that we needed to take care of now. Um, is there, are there opportunities that we're just not seeing, whether it's uh, annuity, fee-based annuity, fee-based insurance products? Uh, is it is it something else that we just aren't even thinking of or some other feature or some other benefit that we haven't even considered? Um, we, have, we are a very tenured firm. I think, uh, um, you know, I, I'm... I'm 32 years into it and I'm not the most veteran. So it give, gives you an idea of uh, some of the uh, intellectual talent that we have here. And we will explore, we will uh, figure out new opportunities and you guys will help us do that. Um, to give you some concrete examples, it's probably a little hard to do that yet, but we are excited about the potential. You know, look at the last two years where this fee-based product line has come and um, I mean, it's, it's just exploded in my opinion. And so based at that speed, and if you extrapolate that, the next two years will be even, even greater in terms of possibilities, options, features, et cetera. And we're excited. Well, we're excited as well. And uh, I think it's, it's really interesting to not just see over the past decade, there's been low cost variable annuities, but we've talked about the income solutions today the bond alternatives for complete protection or partial protection are becoming really interesting as well. And, and really just giving, you know, fiduciaries like yourselves, the only advisors, more tools to be able to solve problems for clients and, 
and add, add confidence uh, to the portfolio planning process. So we're really excited to dive into more strategies as we continue on. Uh, we, of course, have plenty of work ahead of us with the initial project, but uh, you know, look forward to growing the partnership uh, for years to come. And it won't just be a, one first project and you know, we just service it. I know there will be new opportunities uh, to come up and uh, as we continue to both grow uh, moving forward. So I appreciate you all joining today. Uh, thank you for being a great partner. Uh, anything else as a word of advice for other firms out there considering a transition or with a large book of annuities as a, you know, just closing remark from you all that would be helpful for them? Kind of our, our tagline um, since the transition and well, actually even since before the transition was uh, it's going to be hard. Um, it's probably going to be harder than you thought it was going to be. And, and those things are all true. Um, they also said uh, it'll be worth it. And, uh, and now we're just starting to kind of see that in, you know, um, in large part due to, you know, somebody like you guys, Ross, where, I mean, again, I said it before, but there's just no possible way um, that we, without additional resources, could have um, looked at, at transitioning uh, these contracts, um, done all the research to make, they were, make sure that they were uh, compliant and in the client's best interest. Uh, and then running illustrations, uh, doing the paperwork, um, seeing that whole process through, just, there's just no way. So look, um, we needed your help and you guys have been a great partner and we just appreciate the heck out of you guys and uh, would definitely recommend um, your services to, to aid in the, uh, in the transition of, of a book of business. And, and, and we've got a pretty big book. I mean, I, I know you guys um, probably see a lot of different firms, but we've been told that it's somewhat rare to have a firm our size transition to RA just because there are so many moving parts and it is very, very difficult, but um, you guys have made that a lot easier for us. So. I'll just add Ross. Um, I'll echo what Scott said first, you know, thanks for your, your work, your team's work and DPL's relationship. Um, their integration with black diamond is a, a big bonus and we, we've kind of covered off on all that as well. Um, in terms of the transition and, and any words of wisdom, Zip, Scott hit it uh, on the nail, uh, hit the head on the nail to say it's a lot of work. It's going to be more work than anyone thinks. Um, we joke, you know, we joke about coming up for air periodically. And, and uh, in our case, it probably was legitimately a five to six month transition. It'll be a little bit harder than you think. But doing your due diligence is extremely important, whether it's the topic we're talking about today or any one of a variety of other topics, E&O insurance, uh, compliance, uh, your aggregator, your software, your back office uh, support team, your custodian, your CRM. It all requires uh, detailed due diligence, uh, inspection, reinspection, interviews, and, and a, a decision. Get as much Many, as many opinions as possible, get as much information as you can. And we joke, but uh, we semi are, are semi serious that we could write a book. Uh, if, if nothing else, we could write a white paper uh, about the experience. And, and um, the problem is we just got to find time to do it. Um, but we're excited. We're excited about what the future has and uh, to con continue this relationship. So thanks. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining today. It really, I think, great to hear your all story and others will be able to relate either from years past or maybe a journey they're about uh, to embark on here shortly. So uh, I think really timely and uh, I look forward, as you said, to, to growing the partnership from here. So thanks for joining the podcast today and uh, look forward to hearing everyone's reaction as we go forward. Yeah, thanks Ross. Thank you. Thanks Scott, thanks Steve. So uh, ultimately here today, if uh, you enjoyed the podcast, you wanna to listen to more in the future, we encourage you to connect with us at dplfp.com and subscribe for more episodes anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Visit dplfp.com to learn how we can work with advisors like you. And please, for more updates, subscribe to this channel.